G'day guys, it's Jesse here. Thanks for checking out the latest True Footy podcast. Today's episode will be a little bit of a reflective one between Drewsy and myself, kind of looking back at the year. It's kind of like a New Year's podcast part one that I'll do with Drews where we, you know, just reflect on what this year's been like uh, from a YouTube perspective. And then uh, later in the week, we'll probably do one with Bush talking about uh, reflecting on AFL 2020 as a whole and what this season and uh, a quite incredible year has been like in a football sense. But before we get into that, I do need to ask you to check out our sponsors, manscaped.com for the premium ball shaving equipment, I guess, uh, on the market. They've just launched in Australia and with the true footy code, true footy 20, all caps, all one word, you get a 20% off discount and free shipping as well. So it's premium grade quality. They've sent us the products. I use them myself, they're fantastic. And um, seriously as well, a uh, huge thank you to our sponsors as well. It's, probably, it's been probably one of the biggest wins for us on the channel this year has been uh, being able to partner up with Manscaped as well. So if you're in the market for that sort of stuff, definitely check out their website and make use of this great discount. Thanks guys, I hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome <laughs> back to True Footy Potty. 68? Oh, Drew, you, 69. You've, you've missed, missed the sexy podcast, the hilarious podcast by one. I'm fuming about that. This is going to be True Footy Podcast New Year's Edition Part 1. Okay, because no. we were going to do the proper New Year's one today. Bush couldn't make it. Can't exclude Bush. So, And he wants to be involved. It would be cool if like, the silly New Year's podcast partially was like 69. You know yeah. I, mean? I think there's a bit of beauty to that. What's part? So Part 1, we're just going to be like talking... All things true footy and AFL content on YouTube. Mm -hmm. What will part two be? Part two will probably be a look more at the AFL mm -hmm. in 2020, 2020. The teams and whatnot. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like so more. everyone's just clicked off. <laughs> <laughs> Retrospectively, yeah. I might turn this AC back on. I think we should be okay. You reckon? Because yes. I'm fucking dying in here. Yes. If the AC is bothering you, just have some pity on oh, our You reckon turn it on right. No, on. Yeah, on, on, on. on. Nice. It's on now. It's on now. Sweet. Cool. Druzy, this is only your second podcast. Hello. Does that seem weird? No, not uh, not really. Okay, like I've been on, on I've been on the channel quite a lot now. Yeah. Um, yeah. As someone said the other day, it's literally Drew's footy. I don't no. think anyone could see that. Could they see it on that one? No. no. Um, but no. Um, it's been a good year. It has been a good year. Yeah. Um, it's actually Boxing Day for anyone who uh, is watching this. We're <laughs> yeah, recording yeah. it a little bit early. Yes. Yeah, we're on the beers today. So this on is the kind beers. Of like, <laughs> on the, oh. the dark beers today. Oh, well. um, <laughs> and for anyone watching and wondering why the second half of this pod is probably going to get real dumb. <laughs> but, um, I have done one lit podcast before. Yeah. And uh, it was on Cold World and we pulled it. Yeah. So, well, no, nah, that won't happen here. Cautionary tale. Um, so let's just get straight into it. Oh, shall we? How has the uh, come down been from 2019? <laughs> the come down, jeez, yeah. Um, Obviously, your channel popped off a bit in 2019. It did, yes. Steady improvements this year? Yeah, it's been a much more of a hard slog this year uh, In by comparison. I mean, in some ways, yes, some ways, no. Like, I think there's been a lot of positives out of this year. But as I've, I've alluded to on this channel and your channel and I think on Coal World as well, like the growth hasn't quite come this year in the way that 2019 it happened. Where were you in 2019? You started in 2019, dude. So yeah. I was talking to Sean about this um, the other day, my brother. Um, my, my growth has been very linear from the start. Yeah. Um, and I think that's because my, my channel still hasn't popped off. So like Caden Cooks and you, the, probably the pair as well. Um, popped off in 2019 um, and I was still like very sm I'm still small but like I was like penis just wise. starting out sort of thing what did you say? penis wise sorry no um, this is literally my first <laughs> better one this is just my personality um, yeah nice um, but no I was like just starting out in 2019 where everyone was popping off so I've like gained 2,000 subscribers so it's just been like linear mm. like you probably how many subs have you gained this year like 3,000 4,200 ish I think I was about 6,000 last New Year's pod yeah so like my, my progression's been pretty linear because like I wasn't here during I wasn't making the best content I could during the time when everyone was popping off sure so like when we do pop off I think like we'll I'll be like my channel will grow mm. a lot more but it's just been linear for me just because it's all I've ever known because I've only been making videos for two years yeah it's uh it's crazy how easy growth was last year like to put it in comparison I think 
to, if I look back on the videos I was making in 2019 and the quality of the po- even the podcasts, because um, like for instance, I'd never had a guest on the podcast uh, mm. until Lenny late last year. Yeah, uh, and then the pair over Skype as well. So like to think about the body of work that's happened in 2020, um, even dumb things like getting a new set, new equipment, the lighting's better in this like year. Like yeah. there's hardly any videos nowadays. Some occasionally where the lighting's like yuck. <laughs> like yeah. what an absolute stinker but before then it was like literally every video was bad audio visual quality yeah so like long story short for those who find that stuff boring i am so much better at what i do now compared to last year when you had the most growth and the last year was when all the growth happened and it's i don't know what to put it down to yeah because COVID. covid happened <laughs> and that's where all the interest died off but i can't think of a single reason why well i can't think of a compelling reason why there would be less views on YouTube. Well, think how many people go to the games every week. Just think about that. So, seven games a week, you get easily a hundred, probably one hundred thirty thousand at the G. Yeah. Plus like thirty thousand around all the other grounds each mm. week. Say, and that just generates interest from that sort of yeah. thing. So I suppose. I suppose. So you think like there's like a contingent of fans who are casual fans that are into it while it's in their face. Yeah. I and think then so. maybe if that match day experience is gone. They don't have the same desire to catch up on it on YouTube. Yeah, well, think how many people go to the games that haven't gone to the games this year. It's the same as... Yeah, yeah as I suppose. I suppose that's true. I think, yeah, a, probably a good comparison for me is cricket. I was thinking today, I haven't watched a Big Bash game in two years. Mm. And I think... I don't know why. I think it's just gotten a little bit harder for me to watch it for some reason. And therefore... my cricket sucks. Yeah, but my interest has just completely dropped off. Yeah. Um, so maybe it's the same thing with footy with fans who don't... Yeah, like... With it being in Queensland, maybe like there's a Victorian sort of... Um, cause let's face it, a lot of our YouTube subscribers would be Victorian. I don't know if... You, you can't access that stuff. No. Nah. Um, but like I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of that subscriber base is Victorian who have maybe not followed it as much as you. I mean, that's the hope because <laughs> like frankly... Um, like I would say I was probably getting more views than I deserved last year and then at times this year I've probably had less views and growth than I deserve and that's just the way for YouTube sure. goes for some reason which is silly to what extent do you think it's Caden and Cookson dropping like stepping back a little bit from YouTube because they definitely haven't uploaded much this year Cookson yeah. in particular not at all really well you said that like your content maybe at times wasn't deserving of the views that it was getting last year. Yeah. I think theirs was last year. Well, they were making good... Well, yeah. Yeah. They were making good content last year and getting the views that they deserved. Yeah. Um, so this year when they're not getting the views, it's just like complete come down from sure. good content, good videos yeah. to good content, bad views. Yeah. Um, so I think that's why they've sort of dropped off. I'm sure if it was the same season as 2019, they would have been churning out videos. Mm, mm. Um, Caden's been making good content. He has, um, yeah. Just I mean, he not, does music like, this year, yeah, which is a huge thing. But like his videos, like I think he's found like a, a new like avenue in those like three minute, four minute videos yeah. where he's just ranting. They're good. Um, but I know Caden wants to be making videos, match day vlogs, yeah, um, videos with the AFL and and whatnot. That's one thing I also kind of forget. We're over here in Perth, where things is normal. As yeah, well. it's not exactly. it wasn't normal for most of this year in Melbourne as well, which makes it. Tough. Yeah, well, I went to I think about. More, I think I went to about eight home games this year. Really? Yeah. Sick, yeah. So I, I still went to a lot of home games, made like quite a few vlogs, had a little sub meetup. Yeah. There's like eight people that went to that. Shout out if you're one of the eight people yeah. that went to that. Um, but yeah, it was cool. How weird is it being recognized by people? Like you, like when you're walking around and you see someone like look at you for a bit longer and then they're like, <laughs> hey, true footy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is weird. Um I can't remember if I where I've said it. Again, this is the downside of having like three channels, or at least <laughs> yeah. like being involved with yours and then two of my own. Because mm-hmm. I can't remember where I've said shit, so I don't know if I'm repeating myself. Not on this one. Yeah, I don't think I've said much of it on True Footy, but um, yeah, no, it does happen a little bit in Frio now. Like every time we go out, I think it's also because my audience is a lot of that eighteen to twenty four age bracket yeah. who like footy, and that's like a lot of people in Perth who go out. So um, yeah, I like I do get recognised a bit. But, but I was saying to you, I think on your stream. The downside of getting recognised now is like, if I'm being silly on the dance floor, um, which doesn't happen too often, but like, it's just an extra Every thing weekend, to... literally every yeah. weekend. <laughs> no, 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 but I don't know, if I do something dumb, I don't know, not that I really, I'm not really um, predisposed to do anything dumb in public, but like, it's just an extra thing to think about, like on a night out. Do you think like... about it when you, when you... Not at the time. <laughs> What's that? When I'm hitting woes. 
Yeah, when no, you hear one, it's I, open hand woe. I do love an open hand woe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really dragging through old trends from like 2018 back into. Like, I, I picked up D's nuts like two years after it was stopped being funny. And I was like, <laughs> that's why it's funny though. I know. No one finds it funny anymore. <laughs> exactly. And that's the thing as well. I, I lean into it because it's like. I become a character. I like. I play a character almost when I say that shit. Yeah, no, so, I understand it. Yeah. Um, what steps are you hoping to take to grow your channel next year to get the same growth as 2019? What do you think it will take? So, um, one difference I think between 2019 is that um, I was actually full-time for all of 2020 in terms of work. Mm-hmm. Whereas in 2019, for the first half of it, I was still a uni student, so I actually had one unit at a time at uni. Sorry, that's my air conditioner, no, not my bowels. Um, and then the, and then four days a week at work. And that mm-hmm. balance allowed me to make a lot better content. So it's not so much time making the content that I needed. It was, it's the time spent researching it, especially because yeah. my content involves a, a, a large research element. Lots like, of analysis. Yeah, when I, at least when I'm putting the effort into making the, the ones that do well, even like be it a podcast or um, you know, but just like weekly videos, wrapping like or like I'll cover a topic like a little mini journal. Oh, sorry, a mini article. Yeah, that requires extensive research, and I script all of those videos. Yeah, so I think, I think basically making more time, and I, I've kind of um, got plans where I'm going to have more time. I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to say too much on the pod, but yeah. like yeah, it, so I think investing more time, restructuring my life around having more time to do this, and um, hopefully that sort of I think as well that'll help my motivation because I'm not going to be so knackered doing other stuff I'm going yeah. to have more time for true footy which I think will in turn pay I think dividends. that's the thing that lots of people that watch well not all but like a, a large number of people that watch our videos don't understand is how much making videos actually means to us mm. like it's not actually just like putting out a video a couple times a week that just gets out like editing takes for me a minimum of minimum three hours Mm. coming up with the idea thinking about how you're going to execute it filming it um editing thumbnail upload like and then the title um and it's not like you you think of it and then you do it it's like you got to think of it and think how you can make it appeal to your audience um because this is like mine and yours biggest passion yeah. Um, that's why like, I think this podcast will be good it's not completely about the AFL but it's about this channel and like what it means to actually you who actually makes the content not people who watch it 10 minutes a week mm. if that makes sense yeah that's so true. like if you want to have an appreciation of the man behind the content <laughs> this, is, this is the video for that yeah I literally just got on here to blow smoke up my ass <laughs> thank you yeah. but no it, it's um, it is a commitment and you invest a lot of time and money. Like I come up and see Jesse lots um, to make videos. We live like forty five minutes away. Yeah, um, that's really far, and you're the most local YouTuber. Yeah, today, as far as I know. Um, oh, other than you, Cat, which I yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know where he lives, but apparently lived very close to me. Yeah, very, yeah. That's cool. Um, but it's just what you got to do because we're following a passion here. So like when you're supporting Jesse, and like when Jesse and I are getting views, you're supporting our passions. As yeah, cringe as it sounds. That's true. That's what the podcast, this particular podcast, I feel is about. Where did you, where do you get your motivation to work so hard? Because that's, that's another thing people who don't know you don't realize how hard you work mm. because you literally, you committed to a weekly vlog which you've stuck with. Yeah, when I can oh, Well, how many times <laughs> have you missed it? Fair amount. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, I do vlogs when I'm not busy. Yeah, okay. But, but you are also a uni student and you work. Yeah. So, like... You do it as much as you can. Like you yeah. play it down, but and between that and your like your um your match day vlogs, mm-hmm. and then also all the other videos that you do. Yeah, like you're putting a lot of work into it. Where what actually drives your motivation to do that? Because a lot of people will have the idea that they think that sort of life would be cool, like grinding on YouTube. And ninety nine percent of people can't do it. So I what- just live the idea that that life could be cool, <laughs> and I mm. just write on that. Mm. I just made the commitment, and I think once you make the commitment to like realize that you can let your your ego drop and you can take criticism like that's the biggest step and then you're just making content um does that make sense maybe maybe (laughs) yeah (laughs) i'm a bit lit wait yeah (laughs) (laughs) well i don't know once you make a video you realize that no one's 
really there to criticize you but once mm. you make a video and you're like all right i'm happy with that if someone criticizes you you take it on the chin or it yeah. helps improve your videos um how are you with criticism generally I, like i take it on the chin and like i gross nice i <laughs> i like yeah if if there's genuine criticism there i'll i'll implement it you know what i mean like yeah. i'll take it on board but i just yeah it's what i enjoy doing since i was like year five for year six i've always said i wanted to be a football commentator really? and as like media has grown and i've watched lots of english football media um like happen like i can see us implementing that into the afl mm. um but my yeah that's what it, what it comes down to because it's a very unsaturated market so like i think we're doing well at the moment like three two three years in yeah that's it do you think of this as like a side hustle or is this like no a, not at all it's a priority yeah right definitely a priority yeah, yeah. Summer's a bit different because you don't have football. It's uh, hard. It is very psychologically hard to stay motivated. I think we both had big cl- talks and this happened to me last year as well. Yeah. Big um, plans to like grind through the summer and be like, <laughs> I've got so much time off, blah, blah, blah. I'm actually working harder in the summer because I work at Bunnings with bloody retail. But um, <laughs> either way, like I think it's the psychological switch of football's over. So I don't need to upload. Yeah. I think I've been pretty good so far this month. Like, yeah. I, I haven't actually put, put away the... Uh, the pool queue, as they say, but yeah. it, it is harder to do it over summer for sure. Yeah, I think summer's the time for different. I reckon you should like whip up like another documentary style video. I've got a few on the go. Yeah. So, have you started that? I have started writing one of them. Okay, good. But well, I've kind of because because of the draft um, and then the post draft thing, I've, I've prioritized that because yeah. it's relevant. Now it's the true off season. The footy, like the draft is over. Yeah. Um, I've got, and then in the fixture came out. We did a fixture video. Yeah. Um. Now it's, this really is like the quiet wilderness of the off season, and that, this is where I'm going to put my head down and do something like the Adam Simpson documentary I did in January, February. Um, try and replicate that. Um, that's where I continue. I think that's the way to go over summer because there's nothing really topical unless something huge springs out. Mm. But yeah, I remember like seeing. I, I wasn't friends with you when you released that Adam Simpson documentary, and right, I was like, yeah. I've watched it, and I was like, yeah, this is sick. Oh like, really? It didn't feel like. Sometimes on YouTube you waste time watching stuff. Yeah. But like when you're learning something and like mm. just watching like a video unfold that's like topical. Um, yeah, I think it was really good. And I oh, think like so. once you release a video like that, it doesn't matter when it'll be released. It'll get the views and like the watch time it deserves as well because you don't feel like you're wasting your time. Yeah. So true. when there's like no topical thing coming up, I yeah. think like those project videos are a good go. Yeah. Um, which isn't my style at all, by the way. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. For you, you. So you, you couldn't see yourself doing like nah. long format kind of uh, documentary? Nah, uh, definitely not. Fair enough. Enough. Yeah. Yeah. That Dustin Martin video was like as close as I'd it's get good. to that. And I was, like, you should keep minutes. that series going. Definitely. Yeah, but um, drop AFL in the title next time, and then <laughs> wait for the video to get saturated, and then drop the a- like edit the <laughs> AFL out of it. Yeah, um, I was originally planning to make that an over the summer series and do like Messi, Conor McGregor, but fuck yeah, do that. Could do, but I don't know. It only got six hundred views. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you are in a little bit of a um, a slump so to speak we've all had it yeah I've definitely had it recently the thing is I don't, I don't really mind about views um, during footy season I do but during summer it's like get it out if 400 people watch it that's 400 individuals who have seen my videos yeah. so I'm not too fussed about it like our, our yarn with um, deal that got like 500 views yeah that was I've, I've watched it like three times really yeah I really enjoy well, it that's yeah. I mean I'm in it which is kind of egotistical but no I think obviously like it resonates with me. I think you are literally in a slump in the algorithm. It's not. It's yeah. not a reflection of your content at all. And that's one thing people don't like realize about YouTube is that it's so much momentum driven. So yeah, when you're so for instance, Young King Cookson made a video called AFL Fan Stereotypes. Yeah, hilarious video. Yeah, so, something like sixty thousand video of views, right? Yeah, maybe, maybe more. You yeah, maybe more. I think it was like sixty four when I last looked. That could have been months ago. I can't remember. Yeah, if he did that right now, made the same video. Like, if he could go back in time, pluck it, and upload it now. Oh, yeah, 5k? If, if that. Yeah. Because of the momentum that he had back then. And yeah. it deserves heaps of views. Mm. Um, but it's just an example of something like, you can release the same video in different circumstances. You're not in the same sort of level on the algorithm. Like, you won't get the reward. And that's that, that's the tough side of YouTube. Some of my best and other people's content just flops hard. And yeah. then some of my absolute stinks have done well. And I'm like, yeah. oh, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> I remember uploading... Um, 
which AFL teams do I hate? It took me an hour to edit, an hour like an hour from start to finish to film, edit, make the yeah. thumbnail, and I was just like, because it was during a time where I didn't have uni. I think it was my mid semester break. Yeah, and I, I just edited that to like fill the day. And I remember checking, it was like one of 10, 2,000 views in three hours. And I was like, wow, that's nice. But I mean, it was a stinker, like it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> um, Just the way YouTube goes, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Do you have any plans? Like when you see your content and see like that could be improved, do you have any plans on improvements at all at the moment? Um, to the channel or to question. the content? Good question. For me, I think it's mostly... I think my best content is good and I think it's for me the, the idea of improving it is mostly about making time for it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I just think researching the videos is probably my biggest not my weakness at the moment but it's just that will improve it tenfold. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Um, I reckon it? I think it's your live stream. I think Oh my, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think if you could do every the biggest game of every round live stream it um and just work on having the best display, I reckon that would separate you. The thing is, right, I, I was watching True Geordie talk about this. Even the top people like bloody, um, what's his name? Uh, not the top people, but it's a massive YouTuber fucking, what's his PewDiePie. name? PewDiePie. No, no, no. He's a Man United YouTuber. Oh, uh, um, Mark Goldbridge? Yeah, Goldbridge. All right. So he doesn't watch along with Man United games. Yeah. If you look at his setup, it's very simple as well. His camera is not clearly better than mine. Like maybe his lighting is a little bit better don't forget we our webcam is set up to get the whole lounge room yeah, yeah whereas yeah. if it was up close it'd be a little bit different um long story short it's almost as though for live streams you actually need like production company to produce it at the yeah. level really that's much better than that um like i'm sure the graphics could be improved and stuff like that but um it's one of those things where you need to invest a lot to improve it a little but that being said my dream is to actually even if it's just for like a a grand final every year or one off grand final or whatever excuse me to get all the boys together and actually maybe even get a production company to produce a sick grand final live stream that that's kind of like a fantasy i have yeah whether or not it's financially viable and gonna be an investment worth paying off it would probably just i'll probably never make any money off it but, <laughs> yeah but yeah no the live stream in my head like i want it to be like the kickoff i think yeah long term that will happen yeah um i don't know if it's on the I don't think it's... I mean, obviously, I'll tweak it, but I don't think in 2021 I'll be able to... Maybe make, 2025, 2024. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the, that's the thing, like, like a lot can happen in that time. Yeah. I was, like, looking back on my content last year, it's like, that sucks. Like, do you feel yeah. the same? Yeah, 100%. Like, your, yeah, your content sucked. <laughs> yeah, fucking hope it did. I meant mine, but I was joking. Um, <laughs> um, give it a year. Like, yeah. our content's going to hopefully mm. improve like I said like my content last year in terms of like the audio visual stuff like the dim lighting it was grainy I don't have that as much anymore the irony is I think this potty is going to come out a little bit grainy because we're <laughs> doing it sort of later in the afternoon but um, no. but like I've kind of eased that out most of the videos that I do in this flat here are good audio visual quality um, I feel like I mean we've had interviews with, with people like the content has come such a long way um, in the 12 months so, like, from that respect, I, I'm happy with it. One other thing we talked about on your channel, there's so much more personality on True Footy now, and that has always been my goal. Yeah. When I started True Footy, it was never meant to be, like, a, like a podcast around just dispassionately talking about football and analyzing football and trying to be smart and be right all the time. When we started it, I didn't even want it to be exclusively football. We called it True Footy, but I was going to talk about anything. Yeah. Um, but then it call just got... It, call it true footy. <laughs> yeah. I know. It was going to be predominantly footy, but I didn't... I wanted it to be like we could phase in and out of topics and it wouldn't... No one would bat an eyelid. Yeah. Whereas it, it, after about five podcasts, it was like, this is hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Frankly, this is hard to just phase in and out of topics. You can't like, really talk about fucking politics when your name's true footy. Yeah, exactly. It's even like in the summer, even... Yeah, it's hard. True cricket. Yeah. Well, we did a... We did a cricket podcast entirely about cricket. How did it go? I can't remember. Not too well. But this was back in like end of... Oh, it might have been one or two years ago. I actually yeah, can't okay. remember. It was a long time ago. I think it was like around about 26, 27. Yeah. And here we are at 68. So um, where was I going with that? I was talking about how I wanted the pod to be... Yeah, more a, personality. More, more personality. Exactly right. Yeah. So I feel like 
between like videos on my channel, between the potty talking to other creators, the live streams and my other potty cold world, go check it out. Um, and videos like collabing with you, mm -hmm. people have seen pretty much a very well rounded view of who I am. Yeah. So like they would have known me previously as a pretty, um, nerdy footy type, which that is part of who I am. Yeah. Then they would have seen the silly, immature, dumb guy that hangs out with you and makes dumb jokes. That's Thanks. also who I am. The live stream's a bit like that. Thank you. <laughs> they would have seen the, um, uh, like the emotional videos that I've done yeah. on how much the 2018 flag meant to me. And that's also a big part of who I am. Yeah. And then Cole Weld as well talking about, I mean, we talk a lot of dumb stuff on that. Uh, not dumb stuff, but good stuff, like self-help the most, stuff. personal stuff. We get very personal on that pod. So yeah. like, I think I've really come out of my shell this year and that's something I always wanted to do because I think, I think it's sustainable once I, I like it because I feel like my favorite creators do that. Example, true Jordy just plucked that example out of nowhere. Um, I know him and his friendship group so well. Like today I watched the Christmas special podcast that they yeah. do and that's kind of like what we're doing right now. Yeah. Um, and I literally just watched it because I feel like I know them all. Mm -hmm. So I want a true footy to be more a, more like that in that sense. People to know who, who I am um, on a more personal level and feel like they're hanging out with us when they watch yeah. true footy. I think that's the positive to take out of this year to be honest because mm -hmm. once the views come you have that implemented into your content. Mm. And then, like, you have masses, like, love and Jesse McClure, not too, not, not, <laughs> not true footy. It doesn't come from an egotistical way. I don't want people to adore No, me. but, not, like, being able to absorb your content for what it is yeah. rather than just a, a throwaway watch sort of Yeah, thing. for sure. And, like, I, I enjoy putting myself out there a little bit. Like, I, yeah. I'm not a very reserved person. I'm, I'm very open, like, emotionally, socially. Like, I'll, I like to be sort of... Um, sort of lay out all my cards, so to speak. So yeah. I, I like not having that that veil between me and the audience mm -hmm. so that they feel like they know me. I don't know. I don't know. I just get so much more out of it. Um, random segue. Mm -hmm. What Out of 2020, what's like? what's been a high point from you? <laughs> On YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what, what else is there? No, nothing. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think I know what you're referring to. Jeez. Nah. Why would I ask that? <laughs> um, I don't know. My favorite video I've ever created was in 2019. It was filming with Austin and Caden in yeah. Melbourne. That was sick. That's like, yeah. I look I look back on that. I'm like, oh, I just wish I could do that again. Like, yeah. filming with Caden and Austin. Like, oh, just being there in the flesh with Caden and Austin. It's crazy. But uh, <laughs> this year... Because you were a fan of those guys before. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. I was a... I was a I was one of the people watching this, like not that I'm above you or anything, but uh, like I, I was literally like, you didn't I, to say I, that. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally like, I used to watch every video of Cadence, really? and then yeah, and I watched a um a podcast on uh, the Football Daily podcast, and they said um just make content if you want to get into media, make content, and I'll and send it to the creators that like you like, and if they replied like that's sick, if they don't, that doesn't matter. So I made a video, sent it to Caden, and Caden replied, and I was like, yes, yeah, sick, Caden McDonald replied. <laughs> and then I started making, I made an AFL match day vlog, and it got a thousand views. I was like, oh, <laughs> whoa. Um, so yeah, but my high point of this year, I don't know, probably being new, to be honest. Nice. Yay. Just kidding. No, sure. being, being able to, because I've got so many video, well, I don't think I'd run out of video ideas. Like, I, mm. I could always pluck, like, a, a, a every a, AFL club's last rising star out. Well, I could always make one of those. Yeah. And to have you who act like you know way more than me about the <laughs> AFL, obviously it's relative. I'm down here. You're up here in terms of AFL fucking... Penis size. Yeah. No. Nah, I don't know. Um, but like, <laughs> oh, like Lenny's pretty high as well. But like, I don't know. Um, being able to bounce off you um, in videos, but having good video ideas, it's like um, a way that I can make content in the future that will be sustainable. Mm. Um so just like having that because I don't know how I would be going on YouTube if I didn't be if I couldn't collab with you if that makes yeah. sense I know what you mean man and I, I feel the same way like um, should we just make out nah it's I, I don't please think, cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I think people probably don't realise how cool it is and important it is and beneficial it is to have a friend who does YouTube as well. Yeah, 100%. Like, that's something neither of us really had. Like, I know you have a friendship with Caden and Cookson, as yeah. do I. Like, may maybe you're closer to them than I am. Mm -hmm. But that, that the extent of that is, like, we have a, a group chat where us boys sort of 
chat shit and it's great I, I yeah. genuinely love them all but it's different when you actually have someone um, in the flesh in the flesh just to talk about ideas and and I can use YouTube terms and say oh this video didn't do well to you and you will understand what that yeah. means whereas if I say even to someone like a Joyce or a Bush because they're not uploading they're not doing the uploading the editing and they don't look at the analytics yeah it's, it's, it's hard for them to really appreciate exactly what I'm saying whereas I can speak about it casually with you um, but even like when we, we have video ideas and you'll like send it to me and I'll be like nah do this or something yeah, like yeah, that yeah. or like you're like oh this is a bit of a stink I'm like yeah don't do it like, it's yeah. sort of like that you are honest in that sense yeah because that's the only way to be like mm. I wouldn't if you had a stinker and you told me I'd be like if I said film that and then it stunk I'd just feel bad I suppose I am still <laughs> a little bit single minded though I'm the sort of person who would probably just do it anyway but I do value mm. your input well you, know I mean? you were I'm going to do a redraft the other day and I said, nah. And then we did a fixture video. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But to be fair, I hadn't thought of the fixture idea at the time. Yeah. But my plan is to still go through the redraft. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Having like someone that you can go and see and talk to and like connect with and then like you're, you're on a same wavelength and then you can like, yeah, bounce off each other in terms of content ideas. Yeah. It's fucking sick. The cool thing about like this friendship as well is that we always up and down at different times yeah. especially in the first part of our friendship when you're feeling flat is when I'm like fuck yeah bro we should just like yeah. make some videos like move to Melbourne get join the <laughs> AFL and then which will happen yeah and then and then it flips sometimes where I'm just like like there has been times this year where like as I've talked about I have not wanted to, to do videos like I just yeah. haven't felt good about my life or felt good about myself and then I think it's been very positive to have you sort of in my DMs being like, so when are we making another video? What yeah. are you doing this? Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, even though I, it, it probably didn't change my mood, it was, at least it kept that creative and drive. There was someone there in your over. ear keeping it, keeping it relevant. Yeah, so like, you, you have been a very good influence on me in that sense. So, there's bumps. Um, no, it, it has been it has been really good for sure. Yeah, it's good fun. Like, when I, when I think of making a video, it's like, all right, what can I feel with Jesse? Yeah. Like, that's what it is. Like, Those are the funnest videos I find. For sure. Like, they're so easy to film. Yeah. Require we don't even plan them. No. Like, okay, so we'll come up with the dot points, but, like, the jokes and the silliness, we don't even have to plan that. That no. just comes out. And I don't know how funny people find us. Right? <laughs> I literally don't, but I watch them and I will literally fucking laugh my yeah. ass off. Like, the video I just released, the fixture video, is one of my favourite videos I've ever done. Yeah. You said you loved it. I, I, don't, I, I did release it on Christmas Eve, but... So it didn't do so well. Yeah. So I don't know. Question that, the logic nah, on that. No, it doesn't matter about views though because how, how many views did it get? 2,000. 2,000 people watched that video. Think about that, like... I suppose you could frame anything like that. <laughs> no, but that's... 600 a, people watched that video. That's a bro. lot of people though. Think about no, it. No, it, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, like... It's fine. I'm two, not depressed about it. <laughs> no, but like 2,000 people went to my high school. So like, think about it like a whole school assembly. Yeah. It's like, oh shit. Like, yeah. Yeah. Even if they're paying attention or not, but yeah. I suppose I do hold high standards for myself, and I think I think it's good and bad. I think it's also like my no, nah, it's only good. It's bi- it's my biggest strength, but it can be negative, and when I beat myself up over it, you a should bit. beat yourself up though. Yeah, I do think maybe in a YouTube context, not so much, but I think generally in life, it probably hasn't served me well all the time. That's what I've realized: being a being a bitch to yourself gets you nowhere. It doesn't, and it, it can be little shit. I was I was talking to someone recently, and they. They did something. It was just this lady at work and she did something dumb and she's like, oh, I'm such an idiot. And then she caught herself and she's like, no, I shouldn't say that to myself. And I was like, well, that was all very weird. And then I actually started thinking about it. Like if you do internally think, oh, I'm such an idiot for that, blah, 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 all the time. Mm -hmm. Or you like feel, yeah, little, little things that you might think are inconsequential where you just talk poorly to yourself. I do think... This is starting to sound like a Cold World podcast. I do think that's... That's what we're here for, mate. We're here for the good yarns. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. It's sunny. It's all good. Nice. All right. Should I put those on? I don't think you really need to. It is literally 7.15 p.m. on Boxing Day. Nice. No. Um, I think, yeah, before I started making you, well, probably my first year I was a little bit slack, but like, I remember I went out one night and I had a day where I did nothing and it was like the worst day of my life. Like, I think being hard on yourself, like you got to go to the gym yeah. or make a video or work or come up with video idea in a day otherwise it's a wasted day 
And you have to be hard on yourself like that, otherwise you won't remain productive. You can see when other people aren't hard on themselves and it doesn't serve them well. Like a lot of people will... So many examples like, will be that. slack or they'll be overweight and they'll just make... <laughs> no, that, that, that is... It's a great that. example, great example. 100%. Yeah, it just sounded funny. But um, <laughs> funny people... Are, fat people are funny. Nah, that's not what I mean. No, I'm just saying <laughs> like, exactly it's an mean. example of someone who will be like, oh... Like, um, that, you can tell when someone's mindset is like a more, it's like a victim mindset. Yeah. Um, and all they'll make excuses for why they're not doing well. And yeah, it is good to have that opposite mindset. I, I often think I'm probably one of the least self-satisfied people that I've ever met. Mm-hmm. So even when things are fucking amazing, I will always think about why it's not like it could be better. Yeah. Well, why, why is it amazing? What, what's amazing about sitting in your comfort zone? I am mm. safe. Like, sit, yeah. Nice. Just sitting there, get comfortable, mate. Yeah, shit. Who cares? There's nothing impressive about sitting in your comfort zone. Anyone can mm. do that. Yeah, get but I mean, even if I have achieved something, I will not give myself like too much credit. I don't know. Let's say a really good vid, really good live stream. No, somebody, but somebody what, tells me I've like look great after losing seven kilos at the gym, but like I don't don't take any. No one in. told him that. That's why he's bringing it up. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> if someone could please say that to me. <laughs> no, but when I remember you hit like you got 10k views on two videos in a row, and you're pretty gassed with it. Like, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, that does happen for sure. For yeah. sure, like it, it, you always get a little bit of a buzz out of um, like when things are going well. But yeah. I just mean like I don't really have too much of a ego at all. Um, just across my whole entire life, if things are going well, I'm just yeah. Quick Apparently, time. I have an ego. Hmm. Yeah. Do you think ego is built on the positives that your life like? I don't know, overcoming obstacles and then like your character builds off that. Do you think that's what ego is? That's confidence. I think I've I've been told that like, I don't know, sort of been told I've I've had an ego, which is something I've never ever thought of myself. And I've I've always tried to stay on top of my ego Mm. because I hate people that are just egotistical. But when like my ego was tested, it was like, all right, I've, I've like made a YouTube channel, got a little bit of a following. I've gone to the gym, improved my self confidence, and like, um, yeah, and like I've built my character off like following my passions mm. and making myself healthy. Mm. How would you define ego? Like, do I have an ego? No, I don't think you have an ego, but it's also about perspective. Like, I can't tell. I, I don't see you through the lens that the person who said that saw you yeah. sees you through. I think. It's a quite a nuanced word, ego. I, I don't think it's as simple as just being really confident and arrogant. I think, I think ego is like when you let your self-image get in the way of who you are. So like, yeah, okay. it, it affects your actions. So like, if, um, for instance, you can't be like gracious in defeat if you lose publicly to someone, um, you can be confident and be gracious in defeat, but if you have an ego, you're more likely to be like a dickhead about losing. Yeah. Does that make sense? So yeah. I think it's also, I think ego is like when you let that confidence and your your concept of self image or your self concept influence your action. I haven't seen anything really egotistical from you. It's not like I'm going through the Metro's dance floor showing my sub count. No, but <laughs> you, you did show a girl my sub count. Yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was a fat wing man. Yeah, it did- worked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. They were man. stoked with it. They were like, fuck. <laughs> um, nah, 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 nah. Yeah. I did have a question for you and I've forgotten. Thanks. Nah. Who cares? Yeah. Nah, it's the boxing uh, day we potty. Talked about, oh, no, I think I was going to say my uh, <laughs> good segue. Nah, it's the boxing day potty. Doesn't um, matter. No, man. I was going to say my highlight of the year, other than meeting you, but this is kind of tied in with it, was the. Um, grand final live stream oh, that was such a good day it was such a good day because it ticked all the boxes uh, obviously I had, it was a day off because it was Saturday so you just I, I just sort of woke up I made a vlog about this um, I woke up uh, made silly clips with Dylan playing FIFA mm. uh, played a bit of guitar threw an egg out off the balcony you know <laughs> just stuff that happens all the time not really um, yeah, went to not the really. <laughs> not really again. <laughs> no, not actually. I felt like that one needed clarification. I didn't want people to think I actually throw eggs off my balcony. Um, nice. It's only happened twice. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but yeah, so to go out, go to the gym, and then come, so like came home to the events that day. Like Darcy, an old friend of ours, came over. We filmed a bit of like vlog footage, and then we started sinking beers. Mm-hmm. Turn on the, the pregame. Had our cameras here, just like talking shit, live stream. Not only that, but the live stream went really well. 
that's like it was like literally everything came together for me yeah and even though like the night out was a bit shite it didn't it didn't really affect the me night out after that is for those wondering yeah after after that grand final um but like that day before that, yeah i was gonna say that didn't that didn't affect my my mindset i was still like buzzing stoked and i was like yeah fuck this is this is sick like imagine doing this for a career yeah that'd be dope hey yeah, yeah i literally just rocked up we watched a sick game of football we had like 200 mm-hmm plus people watching the whole time 354 was the peak concurrently and then like, that's a lot it's about 40,000 these days so overall so that's nice yeah and then I couldn't get let into nightclubs because I was too smashed yeah yeah that's why <laughs> that's literally why <laughs> yeah um, yeah and the other one for me is um, we had a sponsor this year which was a massive massive goal that I had ticked off it's and actually, what's that sponsor manscaped.com oh yeah I'll have to do an ad for this before this podcast yeah I'll have to do that tomorrow um, great sponsor, great product. Seriously, like yeah. it is cool. Like I'm not getting sponsored by some weird fake brand that I'm not comfortable promoting. Like True Geordie's promoted these guys. Dill Buckley is sponsored by these guys. With Jamo and Dylan, Israel, Adesanya, like these guys. Um, like this is a legit brand. It's a good quality product. This is an ad, isn't it? Yeah. Um, no, but seriously, like that has been something I've been working towards the entire time I've been doing this mm-hmm. and it's come earlier than I expected and like it's a month to month thing at the moment I don't know if enough people will sign up to it for me to, to progress but like mm-hmm. securing them for, on a long term deal in the future is going to be the difference between this taking off in the next couple of years or and like not. not taking off the next couple of years so. well if it doesn't you just got to grind more but hopefully yeah it does oh yeah I'm, I'm, I'm realistic about it yeah. it's, it's, it's what it is what it is but um, no I'm I'm super grateful to them and really, really chuffed about it. So that, that's yeah. probably the, uh, in a strictly YouTube sense, that's been the biggest positive. Maybe the biggest deal in AFL YouTube history. The biggest what? Like brand deal. Oh, oh, probably. Is yeah. it the only brand deal in AFL YouTube history? Probably. Damn. Other than like the AFL and Caden. No. Oh yeah. I mean, you'd rather do that. Yeah. To be fair. Nah. But <laughs> no, no. I mean, you'd rather, you'd rather have both, wouldn't you? But yeah. What do you see yourself this time next year? Great question. Ideally. We need to set goals, don't we? I've been um, thinking about this. We, I talked about setting goals for this pod, and I don't know what exactly I want. I think to maintain a sponsor is my primary goal. How would you do that, though? Generating enough sales for them through getting enough views, mm-hmm. simply. That's, that's how you maintain them. So if I can perform well enough to sustain them over the year, and this January period is going to be difficult, um, that would be my biggest win, I think. I think sub-goals will be secondary. Mm-hmm. I'd love to be like 20,000 plus but yeah nice. there's really no point setting that goal like yeah. um, there was a time where I thought 10k was possible at the end of last year and I just trickled over the line of 10k what are you at now? 10.2 true nice um, so that, then that's secondary what I would love to achieve and I'm gonna this is my bold audacious goal is for any video to be under 10,000 views as average like not good yeah. enough that would be and not including the potty the potty's always going to get less views but yeah. 10k should be my new baseline that's what I want to achieve within 12 months yeah um, that'd be nice being able be nice. to upload like 3 videos a week that all hit 10k yeah. yeah seriously could be nice could be nice what about yourself um I don't really know to be honest like I'm just taking it like bid by bid at you're the so lucky you're 19 man like I'm, <laughs> I'm 27 and like Jesse's it's a bit of an pedophilic no <sighs> borderline I'm not leaving that in <laughs> um, that's a joke uh, man the True Geordies podcast today got very raunchy because they, yeah. they were on the champagne uh, nice. what was I saying what were we my goal about? your goal what is my goal I, I just want to keep making better videos like you, you get what you deserve I think so mm. I've got in mind new videos and I'm about to buy a new $1,600 camera mm. along with an $800 mic. Yeah. So, like, big investment coming in for new content, mm. um, which should hopefully take my channel personally to the next level. Um, that So, I'm just going to make that content and see what happens. Do you um, have a vision of what your the ultimate content you want to do is? Like, for yeah. me, it's like the documentary and the storytelling side of it, which I feel like I've grown to, to realize about myself. That's what I'm good at. Yeah. Mine's like digital media, you, Caden, Cooks, and... So just Mitchell. sort of more of what we do now, but better. Yeah, like Copper 90, like yeah. when it was popping sort yeah. of content. Yeah, but like, in terms of format, not too different from what you're doing, just... Um, 
I mean, they've got ideas for new mm. types of content, but I think, like, at the moment, the formula is... I don't know. Maybe I could switch it up, but I'm I'm happy with what I'm doing at the moment. Yeah. Um, I will switch up the videos next year. I will be doing live streams and mm. um, different different types of videos, hopefully. But um, yeah, like I'll just keep progressing my content year by year and see if it makes my channel grow. I was gonna. I think I remember my point. It was that you're so lucky that you're 19. Yeah. Like I at 27 wish I was where you are at 19. Um, being 27, there's an illusion that you're running out of time. And it's yeah. not quite true. It's it's only as true as you let it be. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, I have to just keep that in mind. Um, it's literally like age is just a number. Yeah, that's what... Because when you're at 27, you're in your athletic prime. So why not be like in your like yeah. creative prime? Yeah. No, that's true. That's true. I mean, if I was... When I was not your age, I had no money to invest anything into my channel. So, yeah. Th- there's, there's those things to think about as well. It's pretty funny. Like, at the moment, I'm mowing lawns. Like, that's my job. I'm mm-hmm. cutting grass three yeah. days a week. Um, and what I've been doing is, like, with the money I've been making, I'll make my money for the day and I'll put $20 in my wallet to spend on nights out and whatnot. Yeah. And then rest, camera fund. And, yeah. like, it's just in that. So, like, I put, like... $60 into my going out fund for tonight mm. and then like the rest of it camera fund <laughs> and like uh, this week I'll buy a camera mm. so that's yeah. like uh, I think Sean said to me um, my brother Sean said if you're serious about making content you will invest what is needed to be mm. invested and that's I was like yep yeah, I agree yeah new camera to film podcasts and new videos which hopefully will be out next season yeah I think there's no real value in half-assing things no and, not at all and that's probably more applicable to me because I obviously work full time and stuff like that I, I, my dad gave me a great piece of advice a couple months back and I think um, I think I said it on Cold World but it just changed the way I see all of it and it was your, there's nothing worse at your age than being too conservative yeah so like being conservative for me would be just half-assing this in my spare time and then working full time in retail, it's like just make a decision, pursue it. I have a law degree. Like I don't need to be pursuing a Bunnings career. Yeah, I really hope no one from Bunnings is watching this, but it's true. Yeah, that's nah. where my head's at. So your I, YouTube's definitely your number one hustle. It is, and I think my mindset cha- changed over time. It became originally it was like, especially to other people, I was like, didn't want to seem too keen on, on this YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, because people judge you straight away, and yeah. I know you shouldn't care what people think. But there's also, like, I didn't really want to put myself out there and for ridicule, especially, like, because I didn't know if I was going to still be doing it in six months. So, like, I wasn't going to say, oh, I'm going to be a YouTuber. And then in six months, if I've given up, then I just look like a fucking loser. Yeah. So, I kept it pretty quiet. But then fairly early on, I was like, I actually do want to make this a career. Yeah. And I think my mindset fully switched in 2020. I was like, I'm all in now. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, it would be so cool to be, like, the first wave of... Like, all the big soccer content creators you see now, it'd be so cool to be, like, the first of the footy ones. Yeah. And then sure. that means we'll be irrelevant in five years. There's Did- a new wave of Mitch Ryans and Cardman. <laughs> <take over. laughs> when you started making AFL or just YouTube videos in general, um, did you start with the intention of making it into a career or was it just, like, a side hobby? Nah, I think it was originally just going to be a hobby, hey? Like, um, it was Joyce's idea and he... Shout out Joycey. Yeah, Joyso. Yeah, it's been a while since. This thing, a lot of people who watch True Footy yeah. will not know who Joycey is. And he literally started it with me. But That's hectic. Um, yeah, no, no, it was definitely just going to be like a chill thing and see where it went. Yeah. For me, I think when I was going through that age, so I was 23 at the time. I always was, and I was approaching the end of my law degree, I always was struggling with this idea that I was doing a degree I didn't really have passion for. And I didn't want to, didn't know what I wanted to do for a living. And I found that hard because the only thing I was good at was talking about footy. And like, at least I felt that way. I was like, That's I, cool. I, That's have no, cool. I have no links to the AFL industry. I, it's such a long shot that I'm going to have a career in this. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking that well before true footy. So it's kind of cool now to see where it is now. Yeah. Where I've got an opportunity to make a career talking about footy. Like that's fucking cool. Yeah, for sure. And that really motivates me. Yeah. to be like I've got an opportunity that's that's the way I feel yeah what about you when you started I started to make a career out of it mm. like, that was the intention from the get go because mm. I was watching oh, I can't remember what the exact podcast is called it's Hamill from True Footy uh, True not True Footy Football Daily in yeah. the UK and he said just make some content 
and like make your portfolio yeah and that's what i've been doing the whole yeah. time that's that was when i started my channel I was like i'm doing what he said to mm. do um and that's what i've been doing so like yeah i started with the intention of making the portfolio um and yeah that's that's why i started i do enjoy it i have learned to enjoy making videos um but i want a career out of this because yeah. it's so fun and it's just the best it's just so, such fun I've been loving it this year there was a time this year where like things were a little bit tough for me in my personal life and like as I've alluded to and I've I lost interest in uploading yeah and I remember there was a time where I uploaded and I took a little break and I remember thinking that could be the last video I ever made like, really? it got to that point I can was you just remember what done. video it was it was like a weekly tips video yeah okay and if you go back there's only like a week and a half in between uploads so people wouldn't even notice it but there was that time. And it was just because things were bad in my personal life. Yeah. And then, like, then I think it was that week I had that conversation with dad and he said, don't be too conservative of your age, blah, blah, blah. And that, that sort of reinvigorated everything. But the thing is as well, like, through that period, I, I remember feeling uh, obviously sad, but, like, the fact that I didn't want to do True Footy anymore made me sad. Like, yeah. I was like, I don't know who I am anymore. This has snuck up on me. This is a huge part of who I am. Do you like, feel like it's a risk that you're taking now then because of that point? Um, what do you mean? Do you like pursuing are you com- it? Yeah, are you confident that you can make this into a career? I think I've got good chance. Yeah. And that's as far as I'd probably analyse it. Like, I, Do you write on that at all? Nah, like I've done that. I've put the things behind me. I've got a law degree. I've got a marketing degree. Yeah. I've done five years of retail management experience. Like, as far as risks go, like it's not like I don't have anything yeah. else going for me. So, yeah. like the conservatism was more about just like don't care what people think about you because you're dropping down to yeah, like not safe. Which I yeah. wasn't going to say on this body. <laughs> That's but, right. Yeah. No, no. But basically, care what people think about you for pursuing this. Gary V was a huge inspiration for me. Yeah. Do you watch any Gary V? I I've seen him pop up in my recommended since mm. I've been watching um Matt. Wasn't it? Oh, something. Diavella? Yeah. Oh, Diavella's sick. Yeah, yeah, I've been watching it. Yeah, cool. Um, so, d- like, Gary V's main message, and I wouldn't rest necessarily recommend it, like, not everyone needs to hear his message, but his idea was, like, if, you're, if you love one thing and you're obsessed with it, for me, it's the footy and the eagles, you can make a career out of it if you try really mm-hmm. hard. Okay, yeah. you just got to be willing to try harder than anyone else. Yeah. Um, and then I think surrounding myself with that kind of content and rhetoric just like penetrating my subconscious every day that just drove me for sure um and then i think it just it got to a point where it plateaued because there's only so many times you can really like i'd already put that work in and then it was it was more about getting through it doesn't slump though does it It doesn't like it's not like linear and then drop down my motivation yeah all like your subconscious like what you've been telling yourself that whole time Mm. do you feel like you you don't lose it all do you no the only thing that's interrupted that has been um my breakup, which yeah. which I found like very tough to get through, because just because of my age, I think it just consume your mind. Yeah, it was, it's a big life change at my age to go from a four year relationship to not. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, that just like shook everything for me. So doing um, like I don't know, true footy just seemed a bit too hard mm-hmm. at the time. That's um, a, yeah, it would have. But I'm like I'm over the hump now. I yeah. Good. And one thing I do want to actually address is the fact that I haven't. The, uh, the one thing I always prided myself on was commenting, replying to comments. Yeah. I do read them all. <laughs> but I do want to say there's a lot of like loyal people who watch just about every video who comment and I don't reply anymore. And I just want to say that I'm, I'm going to work on that because it's just, <laughs> it's just been like the second half of this year has been a bit of a shit fest. Once you don't reply to a few videos, it makes it's, it's, hard, it's harder to get yeah. back into it. It's not that I'm getting more views and I can't keep track of them. Yeah. I'm reading them, especially when someone negative, not that that really bothers me. Um, excuse me. I don't know. I just want to put out a, a thing that I, I'm mm. not getting too big for my boots. I do care what people are putting out there. It's just, and I do read every comment, take it all in. I just haven't had the time. Or I think it's the emotional effort. Yeah. Me and Jesse literally send each other photos of stupid comments and laugh at them. So <laughs> if you comment something like nice, we'll see it. Um, but it's been yeah. a long time since the comment really bothered me. I think it's when it's like really, really personal yeah. and, and a little bit of intelligence behind it. That bothers me. Yes. When it's dumb, like it's my predictions video, which I produced, I produced, I released like, uh, recently, has a heap of negative comments because you're talking about... Every, and a lot scenes. of kids watch that video yeah one of the comments was 
disgusting predictions. I don't know why, but that just tickled me. I was like, that is hilarious. I'm sorry that I rated Carlton 12th. Um, <laughs> but no, that, that stuff makes me laugh. And then occasionally you'll get like a serious one. Yeah, I got one. Um, I remember where I was and I read it. Oh, it was, no. um, I, it was a match day vlog and my mum was in it. And it was about my mum. Oh, and I, really? I replied really nasty to yeah, her day. And then, on, I, yeah. and, then, and then I just deleted it. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, we do read all your comments, um, and the positive ones definitely do um, yeah. help us. I do try and comment on the on the positive ones as well when there's a bit of thought behind it as well. So. Yeah, definitely. If it's like good video, it's like cop a love heart. But if it's yeah, like yeah. good video, I can see you put a lot of effort into this. Blah blah blah. Yeah, bang. It's like yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Cop a reply. So the more thoughtful your comments are, the more likely you are to get a reply. True, basically. true. <laughs> it's it's they generally uh, they do mean a lot to me, and especially when it's the same faces and names. Cause yeah, like that keeps my channel going. So for sure, I do genuinely appreciate it. So nice, nice. What do you want out of this year? Just the um, last four days of it. <laughs> nah, nah, next year. Um, nah, nah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want progression. Just I can't. Yeah. You can't. Like, yeah. As long as I'm progressing, I'll be happy. Hey, like, as long as I'm not stagnant, making the same content, getting the same views. Like, I just want the, want it to increase. That could be hard. Um, yeah. And I will be making new types of content next year, so I think it will happen. Um, do you think 2021 will differ from 2020? Because it, it's, it's not just like a year ticking over now. It's like global pandemic affecting everything. Mm. Um, it's not just like, all right, it's a new year. Like 2020 can get, can like piss off now. Like 2021 will feel a fat downfall from 2020. Mm. Um, I feel like it'll be better than 2020. Um, mm. But I don't think it'll be 2019. Yeah, I don't know. I do wonder if sometimes I've, uh, we've made, or I've made excuses for myself around 2020. Just like, oh, it's 2020, it's COVID. That's why I'm not doing well. I haven't. I don't think you have. No. I, wasn't, I, I said we very liberally. Yeah. Like, I, I'm talking about myself and maybe... Ha, do you think you have? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, look, look, maybe generally. Yeah. But I, to be fair, I don't know if I would have done anything different. I feel like I've worked hard where possible. And then the times where I wasn't working that hard was because I had other shit going on. So it was completely irrelevant anyway. Yeah, I don't think you have, to be honest. I think that's a bad point. <laughs> and on that point, no. I just think I just think it's probably bad mindset to be like, oh, it's twenty twenty. Yeah, Do you know what I, mean? I agree. Like, I agree. yeah, it's a tough one. But yeah, um, yeah. No. I think uh, I don't know. That's probably probably the end of twenty twenty one will be an improvement. I think. Yeah. Well, yeah, I hope so. I'm going to invest more time and energy into it. And money. I invested a fair bit of money into True Footy this year. You did everything you see here. Um, well, half the things you say here are all from 2020 investments. That's nice. So, yeah. That's the downside as well to being a, making YouTube money. You've got to pay it, all the tax back at the end of financial year. Maybe not for you because yeah, you're a student. Me. You don't earn as much. But you don't get taxed when you get paid. This is not good content. But it's just a little little fun fact. So, <laughs> so yeah, I've got to... Uh, We're talking I'm gonna, about tax. I'm going to be paying a big tax bill at the end of the year. Maybe <laughs> that's what happened to True Geordie. True Geordie had a massive tax bill. Yeah, he did. That might be why. Cause do, it's just from YouTube revenue. Oh, pfft, it'd be a factor. It'd be a factor for sure. That's not nice. Mm. But, but, I was I was going to wrap it up. No, no, yeah, you're good. Go. I, I was going to wrap it up. Yeah, I was going to as well. <laughs> ah, nice. Yeah, Very you much do this. Like. But nah, um, if you feel like you've learned anything about Jesse or me, you know, drop a comment. If you are, if you, you know, felt felt these words that were spoke on this podcast. Drop a comment and uh, let us know what you think. And Jesse will reply to the comments in this podcast. I will, I will promise. Um, promise. But thank you for opening up to your fans, Jesse. Yeah, that's good. If and you want to see more of that stuff, ch- check out Cold World. Yeah, that's, uh, that's my other podcast as well. Link is always in the description. Um, where we talk about real shit. It would be good to get to a point where I can separate Cold World and True Footy. Yeah. I, I yeah, it probably already is like that. But um, but once it both become established. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I've got I've got a few ideas for productions coming up in early 2021 um i did intend to get one of them out before the end of the year but i like the draft stuff was going so well with lenny who was fantastic um i kept that going for a little bit longer so through january february stay with us um i know we don't know anything about cricket so we probably won't talk about cricket that much definitely but... not a hundred <laughs> cricket bro well if mitch ryan keeps popping up yeah you... mitch ryan's a good cricket youtuber i actually was going to nominate this uh, sorry i was going to nominate this as a topic um 
and I've kind of given away the answer before I've even broached it. But I was going to say, who do you think are the big talents in the future of AFL YouTube? Definitely Mitch Ryan. True footy? Oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Mitch Ryan and Cardman are on it. Young lads, they yeah. know what they're doing. I, say, I can see Mitch Ryan being an absolute superstar. In five, I five love years, eh? Mitch Ryan, but eh? he's, he actually makes good content. He's confident on camera. Like the production's good. Yeah, and once he, you know, becomes an adult, which he's not yet, which is yeah. crazy. Yeah, oh, he might be sixteen now, but uh, yeah, 16, I think he's turned sixteen. Yeah. No, good on him. He's done. He's done well. Yeah, Cardman yeah. as well, very Mitch young. Ryan and Cardi, yeah. I'll nominate you, Cat, as well. I thought you were gonna say you. I'm gonna nominate you, Cat. <laughs> No, you, yeah. you can't I don't know how old he is He's like 13, 14 Yeah Good content Yeah, no. yeah Like good Like he's He's got great ideas He's very creative Good production Yeah Once he gets mature And maybe starts Maybe making the sort of content That appeals to like Older audiences yeah. As well as younger audiences But realising which of his own content Is good and bad Like Not bad But like I don't know You you, you realise what content Your fans want to see The more Mm. you make videos Yeah So like Once you get a better feel of that It'll make your content better Yeah I think he's early In his process as well So But yeah no, Those boys will Will be there Yeah It's a bright future It would be great To lead them there Yeah I'd love to Not be caught up Mitch Ryan's about to lead me He's about to overtake me Yeah true Cardman's about W's (laughs) Yeah Fuck (laughs) Soz Rip Mm. But nah Yeah Cool Alright Thank you for tuning in to the potty, everyone. Make sure you check out our sponsors, manscaped.com, for 20% off using the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, one word. Um, did I say that right? All caps, one word? No, that came out right. I've yeah. had two drinks. I've had about 12. Jesus. All right. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Um, if, I've com- <laughs> if I've kept my composure this whole time, I'd be very surprised. You kept your composure better than Stephen Trice did on True Geordie's body. All right. Well, that's good. Um, yes, I'm very... Um, well leathered right now but thank you for having well, me leathered leathered yep we'll say that yeah. um, thanks for having me I've had a great time this has been a good chat thanks for watching guys uh, we will be doing a new year's potty with Bush uh, I don't know when we'll, we'll sort that out but there's going to be more podcasts more content stay tuned appreciate you all and we'll see you in the next video proud of you